well, we have a 84 year old lady and she present with increasingly forgetfulness. Although she's 84 year and it's very common in this age, well, she goes to her family physician and she commenced on low dose of haloperidol for agitation a year ago. Her daughter who lives with her has become concerned that her mother seemed to be more confused and has developed twitching movement in her face. Three weeks ago, GP went to see her at home and stopped the haloperidol. But it seemed that the twitching has actually got worse after stopping it. The only other medication she takes is aspirin and amlodipine. MTS was 5 by 10 when the GP visited her home. Well, on examination, we are getting some semi-purposeful movement of her arm and leg, intermittent yawning, jaw movement, and evidence of bilateral cogwheel rigidity in her upper limbs. CT scan revealed cerebral atrophy and calcification of basal ganglia. Most likely diagnosis of underlying twitching is, that's the question is. Well, the answer to this question is dementia of Lee body type, what we call as DLB. So let's learn, DLB the second most common cause form of dementia after Alzheimer's disease. No doubt Alzheimer's is the most common cause of irreversible. dementia. Now, when we talk about DLB, fluctuating attention, attention with a special cognitive impairment, this happen in Alzheimer's disease also. Recurrent visual hallucination, that is the one classical thing that we talk about. REM, sleep behavior disorder, motor feature of Parkinson. Like in this case also, we are getting cogwheel rigidity, we are getting it. As far as this visospatial cognition impairment, which is a, there in uh, Alzheimer's disease, but in that case, the motor feature of Parkinson will not be there. And one more thing, the patient with DLB are very sensitive to neuroleptic medication. That's a classical thing that you got to know. Well, in this case, we had, there was something about MTS. But before I proceed further, I want you to answer me, write down the answer. What do you mean by MTS? Well, MTS, what we nowadays is use is abbreviated mental test score. MTS, mental test score, we use abbreviated. It is a 10 point test to rapidly assess elderly patient for possibility of dementia. It was used first time in 1972 and now we also use some time for mental confusion including delirium and other cognitive impairment this is used, okay. So in this case the score was 5 by 10 score was there that means MTS is not very good that means the patient has some element of dementia or delirium or you can say cognitive uh, function impairment is there. Now. Let's talk about other options that we have extra pyramidal side effect of haloperidol. Doug induced Parkinson is the most common cause of secondary Parkinson. Typically culprit including antipsychotic drug and anti-emetic drug. Okay. The point is, it is often misdiagnosis it, because it can take up to a year to resolve. And therefore, the patient may not be able to be on the offending drug. That's why the diagnosis may totally be missed. Point to be noted, the effect may even persist for one year. Now, movement disorders such as ekathesis, ekathesia, as in this case, orofacial dyskinesia may be associated with chronic neuroleptic use. Like in this patient also, patient has some sort of ecathesic movement are there. It is very useful to distinguish for Parkinson. In Parkinson, we don't get this type of movement. 
there is hypokinesia and there are tremors are there. But in this case, the one point which is extra we distinguish from classical idiopathic Parkinson is this involuntary movement like akathasia and orofacial dyskinesia. Moreover, CT finding in this case are not remarkable for a patient of this age, nothing special about it. But now again, I have got two questions for you. Write down the answer. I just talked to you in the previous slide that antimetic drug can cause Parkinson-like feature. My question is, which anti-epileptic, which anti-emetic drug can lead to Parkinson-like feature? And second question, we did talk about akathesia in this thing. What is akathesia? Write down the answer. Well, the antimetic drug which is notorious to cause Parkinson-like feature is metoclopramide. And second question, what is akathesia? Is a movement disorder characterized by a subjective feeling of inner restlessness. But the person is always restless from inside. So that's why patients tend to move all the time. Okay. Is accompanied by mental distress and inability to still sit still. He will keep on moving all the time, something, something. Move, always moving. Look, it looks very odd also, a person sitting and sitting in front of you, always moving or getting up like this thing. Okay, and usually it looks that patient is under mental distress. Legs are predominantly affected. That means, of course, I could not show you, I cannot show you the leg movement at the moment. But you try to move your own legs or legs are moving, that means he will stand up, get up, go, move, or at the most, or you can say cross legs, cross leg like this thing, okay. It may, the patient may fidget, log, rock back, forth or pace, while some may just have an uneasy feeling in their body. So you can say, in summary, he's restless while sitting also. He's not able to sit, he keep on moving. This is akathisia. Let's look into other options. Parkinson's disease, idiopath, idiopathic, would feature in differential diagnosis. Yes, patient has cogwheel rigidity. Given the medication history and lack of asymmetry, a drug-induced condition should be considered first. Typically, the patient of Parkinson is having hypokinesia, tremors, which are resting tremors. Resting tremors are there. And we start in one thumb and they can go to other side and finally, uh, okay, cogwheel rigidity. In this patient also, they have a, some element of cogwheel rigidity is there, but other feature, what are extra feature are there, which distinguish from Parkinson's disease and moreover, moreover, uh, drug history is there that which can cause secondary Parkinson. Now, this again, recent advances at time, we have some confusion whether patient is having essential tremor or patient has Parkinson-like tremors, only tremor problem in the very early stage. In fact, tremor are one of the earliest feature of Parkinson disease. In case of doubt, then we can go for radionuclide dopamine transporter scan, what we call as that scan, which can help. Look into this. In essential tremor patient, we are getting a coma-like scan, but in case of in case of uh, Parkinson, we are getting period shape, what we call as, okay, abnormal scan, and this you can comma shape is there. So that scan is used to confirm. Other options are multi-system atrophy is a neurodegenerative condition with either predominant Parkinson-like feature, what we call as MSAP, or a cerebellar ataxia, what we call as MSAC, or patient may have mixed type of picture having both cerebellar feature and Parkinson-like feature. Well, now, MSAP, symmetrical akinetic rigid Parkinson-like feature are there. Autonomic failure, this is one of the classical feature which, uh, which really say that we are dealing with MSAP. Well, 
सो नाउ अगेन ए क्वेश्चन फॉर यू ए पेशन ऑफ पार्किसन कम टू यू ही सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड यू वॉन्ट टू बी शो दैट यू आर पर हैव द पेशन हैज डेवलप एम एस ए पी रिमेंबर ही हैज ए कानेटिक लाइक पिक्चर एंड मोर ऑफ ए सिमेट्री टाइप ऑफ ए कानेटिक पिक्चर आर देर ऑल दो इन पार्किसन वी यूजली टू बिगिन विद वी हैव ए सिमेट्रिकल नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू बी शो दैट पेशन एज ऑटोनॉमिक फेलियर सिंपल इन योर ओ पी डी वट टेस्ट यू विल डू वट क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन यू विल डू टू चेक ऑटोनॉमिक टेस्ट फंक्शन इज अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन स्टॉप द वीडियो राइट डाउन द आंसर द आंसर इज पोस्टल हाइपोटेंशन दैट मीन्स यू टेक द बी पी इन सिटिंग सोपाइन and you check the bp on standing position and you can find if there is postural fall of bp is there that means you are dealing with autonomic uh, failure and that may point toward msap urogenital dysfunction can be there pyramidal features may also be there something very interesting because that means in one patient we are getting uh, extra pyramidal as well as pyramidal fasciae may be there and cerebellar ataxia may be of varying degree as i told you there are two types cerebellar or or parkinson like okay so we are getting two pictures however cognitive function is relatively well preserved in parkinson also cognitive function are preserved up to late stage only like this all the cognitive function are impaired only in the later half it's a typically disease with a earlier onset usually in 50s as compared to parkinson which is usually the disease of 60s so this msa is a decade earlier disease is there now other option is alzheimer disease the type by insidious onset of progressive declining memory okay always of memory there is nothing like reality nothing like cogwheel nothing like a pyramidal feature and when we are talking about this memory loss in addition to that patient may have executive dysfunction and visual spatial impairment this is something unique now the question is we have been reading this visual spatial impairment but what is that what do you mean by this write down the answer well it's a loss of sense of awareness in relation to one's own environment and relation to object to each other patient is not aware okay where he is awareness and it's often linked to topographical disorientation also well the one more way of testing is uh, you ask the patient to thread the needle okay again total disorientation that is again what is a type of so called visual spatial impairment well as far as neurological examination concern in alzheimer may be there but they are very uncommon there may be pyramidal extrapyramidal but they are very uncommon by and large when we examine the patient you may get no abnormality myoclonus seizure they are a very uncommon feature or they occur in the very late stage not early feature so by and large memory loss is the earliest feature and one of the earliest memory loss is nominal aphasia nominal aphasia means patient tend to forget the names well it's very common in a normal person also we all tend to forget the names at time we are not able to recall is a normal finding also but in alzheimer disease is again considered as one of the earliest feature of alzheimer disease well again i have one more question for you write down the answer what do you mean by capgras syndrome okay well capgras syndrome these alzheimer patient in advanced stage they are they to totally forget everything okay so they are to be treated like a small child they have to be fed by mouth but somebody will feed them they have to take into toilet 
यूज डायपर फॉर देम यू का मेक देम टेक बात जस्ट लाइक ए देर ईड ए केयर लाइक ए स्मॉल चाइल्ड इनफेंट यू कैन से टू मोर प्रसाइज इनफेंटाइल केयर इज नीडेड वाइल एल्डरली मैन पर एट टाइम दिस पर्सन पेशेंट थिंग द वन हु इज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ हिम इज माई एनिमी एंड दे स्टार्ट बीटिंग द केयर टेकर एंड दैट इज सुल कैप ग्रास सिंड्रोम इट इज सीन इन अराउंड टेन परसेंट केसेस ऑफ एल्जामाटिस सो गोल्डन लाइन टू रिमेंबर इज डी एल बी इज द सेकेंड मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ डिमेंशिया आफ्टर एल्जामर डिजीज वेल आई होप यू लाइक द सेशन जस्ट टू इन्फॉर्म यू वी हैव फॉलोइंग कोर्सेज फॉर यू स्मार्ट मेडिसिन देर आर थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी आवर्स ऑफ प्री रिकॉर्डेड वीडियो लेक्चर ऑफ होल इंटरनल मेडिसिन it includes all super specialty and allied subject covering a to z including basic concept about every topic second we have tests and discussion there are more than 1000 question which with discussion of the questions sample question and discussion you saw in this session now third thing is medicine simplified which is a textbook of medicine Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine but it is too vast reading one page of harrison you need half an hour to understand you need two hours but you need only two minute to forget what was written in that page then what is the solution we have medicine simplified it's a textbook of medicine but so called mini harrison it's a summary of what you need to read from harrison the book is available in amazon also now these three things are more than enough for your md dnb medicine and family medicine final exam preparation need ss exam preparation you don't need to read any other book these three are complete in all the aspect for more detail you can contact at this number it's a mobile ad as well as whatsapp and this is my personal email id anybody want to reach to me you can contact me at this email id thank you very much